we get node. There are two physical nodes and a node that is not really physical. You can see already from the version that is not something that is running natively uh, on a node. I know that bad guy. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's actually case GPU is a solution that we developed together with CWeb. And we all know that right now GPUs are like gold. They're very, very expensive. So maybe you don't have enough money. So we try to create the same experience that we're expecting from the cloud about resources, but for GPUs. Welcome everyone, welcome to the SciGeeks podcast. With us is uh, Dario here. So welcome Dario. Dario works at Clastix. So can you just introduce briefly yourself before we go into a teaser of today? Yeah, so. yeah, I'll try. So my name is Dario, Dario Tranquitella. The surname is always a mess, especially with Americans. Uh, after three years, uh, some of co my colleagues they discovered that it was Tranquitella instead of Tranchitella. And most of the time, I spend the, the time creating memes on LinkedIn, on Twitter. Now it's not anymore Twitter, but you're getting the point. Uh, and as a part-time job, I write code. Um, I co-found Classics in 2020, and I focus on Kubernetes mostly, on uh, the multi-tenancy. And I've been a software engineer turned uh, DevOps engineer, size rabbit engineer, back and forth. So essentially I write code, mostly go about Kubernetes stuff. And that's all. Yeah, cool. So just to let you know that Changotini is not easier to, to say in English than, than Tranquitella. So <laughs> you're, you're not alone. In pain, you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, cool. So let me go directly to the point. Uh, I like to share uh, a teaser that is the result of some interaction we had uh, in the past where we um, set up some cool stuff that I, I want to discuss with you today. So uh, let's dive in directly into the terminal. And you can see here we have a Kubernetes cluster that uh, get as uh, two no physical nodes. So get node. There are two physical nodes and a node that is not really physical. You can see already from the version that is not something that is running natively uh, on a node, and it's called Kubernetes GPU. Can you just introduce briefly, Dario, what Q case GPU is? And I know that what? bad guy. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's actually case GPU is a solution that we developed together with CWeb. Uh, CWeb is a cloud provider from Italy, and they started a huge investment. About, uh, they started investing in uh, GPUs, so you can um, you can reserve uh, instances as virtual machines consuming the GPUs, or you can start with this serverless solution. So the idea here is to simplify um, the infrastructure setup and the provisioning and the provisioning of GPUs, mostly about Kubernetes. So, the use case is that maybe you're running on-prem, and we all know that right now GPUs are like gold. They are very, very expensive, so maybe you don't have enough money uh, to buy your own. And uh, we've been we've been used to the cloud where you can spin up virtual machines or whatever you want in a matter of seconds. So we try to create the same experience that we're expecting from the cloud about resources, but for GPUs. But of course, the GPUs, they must be uh, in the same data center or in the same cloud in environment where your Kubernetes cluster is running. So case GPU is an implementation of a virtual kubelet, but I don't want to spoil it so much because Diego, uh, yeah. you, you know better than me, the virtual kubelets, uh, you know, remember no, we I, talk a lot. I, I'm not sure about that, but yeah, uh, we are talking the same language there. So yeah, just for the moment, this is a virtual node. All right, yeah, guys. So it's a virtual node. Um, what is cool about this virtual node is that if I do get uh, pod minus n alix, that is the next tool we are talking about. Uh, all right, there is a pod here called runner alix runner that now it, it would be awful to put it wide. Well, let me check. Yeah. Definitely awful, but uh, trust me, you see here a pod, follow the line, and you see that eventually is running in case GPU node. Okay, so this guy here 
is the responsible for the magic that I'm just about to show you. All right, the other components are components that are running on physical nodes, so any Kubernetes cluster, any even single machine with Docker Compose can bring up a portal like the one I'm going to show. So this is a LE AI uh, work and tool, so I will put all the references also in the chat probably, so let me uh, quickly, very quickly, let you some information live, okay? And so you install your stuff and you end up on this page. This page that is very similar to a chat GPT at your end, if you wish. So you have a new session where you can ask for text generation or image generation, but you have also much more. So you can deploy the so-called runner that are daemon connecting to this hub, able to run uh, generative AI inference on remote host. So if you start to uh, uh, connect the dots here, you start thinking that this remote host here called runner Alex runner is by accident or not <laughs> the same guy that is running on the remote host on CWeb. So what this means that if I do something like this now, I ask, hey, can you say hello to our Psygeeks friends? Oops. This is running on the remote host on the virtual node. All right, so it was very quick, uh, Alex, has already uh, implementation for different kind of stuff that are not only uh, inference, are uh, the so-called applications. So you can store uh, application that you can in integrate with each other, but yeah, save this for, for later and also fine tuning and, and rag. So a complete platform for uh, generative AI application development. We decided in this episode to merge the two things because they look cool and that can be also very convenient. What do you think, Dario? It was uh, fast and clear enough. You want to add anything? No, absolutely. It's mesmerizing. I would say that uh, also the fact that it's running in Kubernetes, you know, it's very cool because um, I'm using Kubernetes since uh, some years. I don't remember anymore, you know, uh, but essentially uh, what I what I like to describe Kubernetes is that it's a de facto standard. You know, we are Italians, so we we are using a lot of Latinese, but uh, it means that it can run everywhere. So it can run on your machine, on the cloud, on prem, even for GPUs. And combining the two solutions together, uh, essentially, you're creating a software stack. I will say, even though we have GPUs, so we have hardware, but essentially, it's portable, so it can run everywhere. And the idea behind Kate's GPU was to take full advantage of Kubernetes because we're already running everything on Kubernetes. So uh, what's going to happen if I don't have enough GPUs or maybe because they are too much expensive, I can run them uh, maybe even just a matter of seconds. Uh, it's up to you because containers are running inside of Kubernetes. And long story short, essentially, um, it can run everywhere. So today, they are running on CWeb. Tomorrow, they can run on prem. They can run on hyperscalers or cloud, and so on and so forth. So it's very, very cool. Yeah, and some that follows this channel also know that can run on on Solarium as well somehow. So <laughs> that that would be cool as well. And um, yeah, um, I want one question for for you right away, and um, it's about how this magic works without going to the very fine details of course but that you probably even couldn't okay, do so, <laughs> so it's it's going to be something like explain me virtual cubelets like i'm five years old um pretty complicated but no uh it's pretty straightforward so keep in mind that kubernetes is a sort of framework to create this with computer uh this with computing Platform. So it means that we have the control planes and then we have the worker nodes. Uh, the control plane is one is the one that is hosting the data. So we uh, we have all the pods, the deployments, the secrets, the config map. 
but we are running our workloads on the worker nodes. So this separation is pretty important here because the worker nodes are essentially cattle. So they could be virtual machines, they could be bare metal instances, they can be whatever you want. And how this hardware can be um, assigned to a Kubernetes cluster, to a Kubernetes control plane. Essentially, we have the kubelet. Uh, originally, it was named Minion. You know, I always thought that Minion was coming from Despicable Me, but I'm not so sure about that. <laughs> Who knows? Anyway, uh, the kubelet is the one that is interacting directly with the control plane. And yeah, the design that you're putting here as a chart is perfect. So the kubelet uh, is registering to the Kubernetes control plane and essentially is going to be a sort of bridge, a sort of an adapter. So it's it announced itself saying, I have this CPU, this amount of memory of storage, ephemeral storage, and so on and so forth. So every time we have a node and we will like to deploy our applications uh, into the nodes, uh, in Kubernetes, we are creating some pods. And these pods then are assigned to the kubelet according to some algorithm. So there is a scheduler, but it's going to be too much complicated. You just need to think about that we have the kubelets. Um, so the kubelets are the ones that are saying, I have resources that you can consume, and we can have multiple resources. Uh, I always said memory and CPU, but if we think about GPU, since we're talking about GPUs here, um, you can announce also GPUs. And what we did essentially was to say, uh, let's imagine I have GPUs, and I would like to make them um, consumable from the outside. So there is a nice project uh, that is named Virtual Kubelet, and it means that a component running inside of your Kubernetes cluster, and it says, I'm a Virtual Kubelet, I have a signature. So it means that the Kubelet is interacting with me using a contract, an API contract, and I return the list of the workloads. So essentially keep in mind that in Kubernetes, everything is based on contracts. In the end, Kubernetes is a software, and we all know that when we are writing software, we have interfaces, we have contracts, we have scheme, and so on and so forth. So essentially, it's the same thing here. So the virtual kubelet uh, expose the same methods, or rather, they are not methods, but they are HTTP with payloads and so on and so forth, compared to a regular kubelet. And, um, what is doing this virtual kubelet? It's up to you. There are plenty of implementations. Um, uh, the virtual kubelet uh, is just a contract, and it's up to the implementation to define what we would like to offer. So it means that every time we have a pod assigned to the virtual kubelet, our implementation can start a virtual machine. It can start a resource, something externally. Um, the example here could be even a Slurm instance. instance. Slurm or Slurm? Maybe it's LARM. Yeah. Maybe it's LARM. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. S L U R M. I don't know. So yeah. it's up to you. Uh, acronym, acronyms are always challenging for me. Uh, I'm not an SE speaker. That's the reason. So essentially, with the virtual kubelet, what we did uh, with Kate's GPU was saying we would like to start some pods running on top of GPUs. And we can talk later about the concept of GPUs. You just need to think about here that with the virtual kubelet, you can extend the deployments of something that is represented as a pod. So it's entirely managed by Kubernetes, but it represents something that is different compared to a pod. It could be a remote container. It could be a Cloud Run instance. It could be a virtual machine. It could be a Slurm. It's up to you. So essentially, it's very interesting because it allows to extend also the topology of a Kubernetes cluster and to manage resources that are not directly related to Kubernetes. Yeah, and in doing that, I think the cool thing here is that you can also foresee a way for the control plane for the user, if you want, or for the APIs to say and to tell additional information to, to Virtual Kubelet about a pod. So that in other cases would be ignored, but I don't know, I think about annotations that we use for the Slurm implementation, you can pass whatever information that is typical for that backend here, for that custom implementation, both from the uh, internals of Kubernetes, but also from the user perspective. So that's the flexibility of, the, of this tool. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. 
And OK, so in this particular case, so when running at CWeb, how the resource management, how we end up using uh, a GPU on this right hand side of okay. the plot? OK, so. Uh, holy cow, let me. Please, people in chat, let me know that you're not seeing <laughs> the draw, the drawing. So, OK, now it's fine. OK, that's great. So <laughs> it's my turn right now. So essentially, keep in mind that we have our node that is a virtual cube. Well, it's a cubelet per se, and then we have the virtual cubelet. So it means that this is case GPU, and we are now seeing some CPU, memory, and GPUs. So I'll try to keep it simple. It's way much complicated rather than this one. But essentially, we are running in a Kubernetes cluster that is a multi-tenant aware. So what is multi-tenancy? So the multi-tenancy in Kubernetes is something that we already use too, because we have the namespaces. So the namespaces are a way to separate, in a logic way, the workloads. You can imagine I have dev, QA, and production. Of course, that's a silly example, because I will run the production cluster, well, the production workloads in the same environment where I have also development. But <laughs> you're getting the point. Yeah. To make it more uh, production grade, you can think that maybe I'm a huge bank, I'm a huge organization. I have multiple uh, development teams. And essentially, each team has its own space. So it, it's a sort of slicing the Kubernetes cluster um, into groups. And in these groups, I can assign quotas. I can essentially, it's a sort of slice, OK? A partition of a nerd disk, but compared to Kubernetes. So in the multi-tenancy, this is pretty simple. You can do it with namespaces. But the problem is that it's going to be very, very challenging when you have hostile tenants. So the concept of tenant, it's like users, regular users. If they're part of, say, organization, it's pretty easy. You know, uh, yeah. We are all friends, and we are happy to be together. It could be challenging if they are from different organizations or even from uh, organizations that don't know each other. So essentially, we have a multi-tenant environment here, and we have a bunch of nodes. So I'm going to create the GPU nodes, GPU node. And these GPU nodes are available to consumption. But the problem is even way, it's way more complicated <laughs> because it's not just a matter of CPU. You know, in Kubernetes, you just declare CPU, memory, end of the story. But maybe this could be a different color let's say orange because this is an h100 a100 sorry then we have these blue ones and we are talking about h100 and maybe these ones uh let's go for the green they are l40 okay so we have a topology here so how can we expose this topology to end users because they don't have visibility. The idea of the serverless approach is pretty simple uh, because I don't want to manage infrastructure. Every serverless solution, it says straightforward. You don't need to take care of provisioning, the provisioning, and so on and so forth. So we have the virtual kubelet, essentially, uh, that is running not directly here. So we are going to move this guy here in our cluster. We are connecting to the CWeb cluster, where we have the multi-tenancy. And our black magic, I will say that um, it's assigning the pods of each user to the available GPU node here, uh, ensuring that there is quality of service. We are not creating noisy neighbor effects, and so on and so forth. And how we are doing that? Essentially, um, we have the implementation of the virtual kubelet. But we are also using some other tools like Capsule. Uh, by the way, it has been my first open source project. And now it's part of the CNCF. And we are using also Kamaji. Uh, that is my last open source project as Classics, of course, that is doing something um, that is named Control Plane as a service. Um, oh just to keep it short, essentially, what we need to do is to say, we want to expose this kind of instances. So instead of creating multiple virtual kubelet, because it could be virtual kubelet for H100, or maybe virtual kubelet then for, I don't know, A100, it would be too much complicated. 
uh, what we went was a simple and straightforward implementation like this. And we are installing uh, automatically some additional runtime classes. So in Kubernetes, the runtime class is a concept that we use to define a different workload. So if you think about containers, you have container D that essentially it's run C, or you can have um, a different runtime class, maybe because you're using GPUs. Uh, because yeah. with the GPUs, I'm not very the right guy here trying to explain, but there is a sort of hook system uh, with NVIDIA drivers. So essentially, you are spinning up a run C container, you create a connection to the assigned GPU, and essentially you are connected to the CUDA drivers of the inter of the device, and then uh, you have a sort of privileged um, uh, PCI connection with the card. It's way more complicated, but you know, uh, just to make it simple. Um, so well, just yeah, just one comment. So uh, it's correct to say that this runtime class is the tag that you use yeah. to define all the following flow until the green, blue, or yes. yellow boxes. We, we are using these ones. So you will have CWeb 800 no. or CWeb 800. So it means that what you need to do is to say, this is a pod. I want to assign that with the virtual kubelet using one of these classes. And then what we are doing is just a replication. So we are copying back and forth our pod from the origin cluster to the remote cluster. So this pod will be here replicated. So it's going to be a different color. Oops, let's say blue and this way. I'm not very good at Excalibur, my, my bad. <laughs> and this pod is going to be assigned to one of these nodes. And essentially what we have here is a sort of bridge. So our pod in our user space cluster is essentially replicated in a multi-tenant environment here where essentially it's running as a pod. So I don't need to translate like a virtual machine. They are the same context. So I can do an exec, I can do a port forward, I can retrieve the logs and so on and so forth. And it's yeah. really convenient because you don't need to change anything from the user space. It's just a matter of runtime class. Once you assign the runtime class, automatically can be the assigned to the virtual kubelet and it runs as you uh, as you as you show uh, before, essentially. So let me. Oops. Uh, I just wanted to to show this in practice. So I might have here exactly <clears throat> the part that we we showed before. So this is the runner that is following exactly all this route down here. And as you can see, uh, let me check. Line 28. OK. Right, uh, 28. Yeah, you're okay. using, the, yeah. No, 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 but it was 28. Ah, 28 down. Down, yeah. <laughs> now it's still 28. OK, I, let me search for right. runtime. Plus it's better, eight. yeah. yeah. OK, so I found that. OK, here we are. So this is the runtime class name. And essentially, then the other stuff is that you want to explicitly select that node, probably. So you have here some node selector and, and toleration. Well, the toleration, I suppose, that is the same also for, for interlink is to avoid that something that shouldn't go there uh, end up in on a GPU node where well, it doesn't belong to. Keep in or... mind that uh, you can simplify here because you can avoid the node selector and the tolerations. Uh, because if you try to take because a... of the run class, yeah, yeah, the, in the runtime class, uh, yeah. there is a here. Yeah, I don't remember anymore. It was I don't remember the name, but essentially you can force the node selector and the tolerations, so you don't need to type that every time. So it's just a matter of assigning a runtime class. Yeah, cool. Right. Um, OK. So here there are the resource limit and requests that these are needed instead, right? Because I suppose that, uh, yeah, you can have multiple containers, but only one of them 
sh should use GPUs? Um, keep in mind that uh, we are mostly doing with C web. We are just operating GPUs, so okay. you you can skip assigning the limits. Um, automatically, what we do is since it's a serverless platform, uh, we are automatically assigning the amount of GPUs, the memory, and the um, CPU. Uh, I was saying GPU, but I already mm -hmm. said that. So you can avoid that. But if you want, I don't know, maybe because you have a multi-container application yeah. because in the pod, you can run multiple containers. Yeah, that's fine. You can create a sort of partition of memory. So it's up to you. Of course, what's going to happen if you put memory something like one terabyte? It's not going to work <laughs> because we don't have a proper yeah. hardware um, underlying infrastructure. But uh, the approach here is to make it very, very smooth. So you can totally forget about the limits. We are automatically assigning that. Uh, so if you try also to run um, the list, if you try to enumerate the memory inside of the container, we, you will notice that you're consuming all the available memory there. OK. And if I put another container in here when I specify no NVIDIA GPU, what happened? The uh, whole pod is consuming uh, just one GPU, right? One GPU. It okay. depends, mostly because uh, sharing memory uh, with GPUs is very challenging. Also, because we had a CVE um, yesterday. It has been published a CVE about the NVIDIA Container Runtime Toolkit. No, NVIDIA. NVIDIA Container Toolkit. Uh, we are just talking about NVIDIAs uh, because the MD Rock is totally a different approach. Anyway, um, with C-Web, what we're doing is that we are shaping infrastructure according to the customer's inputs. So it means that if you're running an 800, it means that pretty sure you want uh, a sizable amount of resources. So we are always doing a sort of virtualization here. Uh, it's a sort of secret sauce that we are doing. Um, so essentially, we are ending up with a lot of nodes, but a few pods. So it's going to have the same concept of creating a virtual machine. But what we are doing here is that um, with Kubernetes, we can automate all the joining process. It's going to be much quicker. And also, we have a abstraction layer. It's not a proper abstraction, but it works everywhere. So that's the main concept. And what we were looking for was also to create a um, an experience that was provisioning very, very fast. So essentially, we have a pool, and you can spin up GPU instances in a matter of seconds. Um, so you don't need to create the virtual machine, wait for the IP, then the SSH, install everything. We are doing everything behind the curtains, and we are just waiting for the user workloads. So essentially, the concept of um, serverless, actually. Yeah. Yeah, cool. And so in terms of isolation, before going a bit uh, farther and see some of the use cases for this kind of on-demand uh, needs, um, do you have use cases that are kind of confidential training or something like that? So that request, for instance, uh, in sciences, you can ask for entire dedicated node to avoid yeah, that kind of security risk that you mentioned before. Uh, yeah. Well, keep in mind that there is a project that is confidential computing, well, confidential containers. Uh, I saw also a presentation from KubeCon, and it's very, very interesting. And right now, we are not offering such a service. Uh, but C-Web, keep in mind that um, if you're looking just for your private cluster, it can be offered. It's not a big problem. Uh, the issues here is that there are multiple surfaces here. We have Kubernetes, where we have the multi-tenancy. And then we have a segregation at the namespace level, where we apply a set of policies like the network, uh, the limit, uh, the container limits, uh, the resource quota. And also, we try, we do our best according to the uh, multi-tenancy benchmark guidelines to prevent previous escalation. So it means that even though the pod is able to escape, it's it's not CH root, uh, but it, it, ex it escapes uh, uh, from its process, from its chaining. Uh, we have just a few pods running in the same virtual machine. So it means that we are not mixing uh, multi-tenant workloads together. 
So just to offer a high segregation between the workloads. Otherwise, it could be very, very, very bad. But I was also thinking about the problems with networking because uh, from, from the Linux standpoint, CPU, memory, uh, it's pretty easy to manage that. We have the namespaces, we have the C groups for the network is way more challenging. I'm not saying that it's impossible, um, but it requires more efforts, even though we are working on that. Yeah, 